Hi guys! So our topic for today will be all about non-current asset held for sale. So in this topic, we will be using the IFRS number 5, which entitled what? Non-current asset held for sale and discontinued operation. So first, we'll start by defining what a non-current asset is before we move on to the definition of a non-current asset held for sale. So a non-current asset is actually just a residual definition. Sir, what do you mean by residual definition? Meaning, a non-current asset is actually right an asset that does not meet. Again, this is this is an asset that does not meet the definition of what of a current asset. So all asset na hindi nag-comply or hindi na-meet yung definition ng isang current asset, automatically, ikaklassify po natin as a non-current asset. Get me? So, examples of non-current assets, as we all know, are land, no pa, building, no pa, disposal group, right, etc. Disposal group and then etc. So, lahat ng asset, non-current assets, or lahat ng assets na hindi na-meet yung definition ng isang current asset, automatically non-current. So, next, let's define what is a disposal group is. Because alam naman natin, tama ba? Alam naman natin kung anong ibig sabihin ng land and a building. So, let's define what is a disposal group. Disposal group is actually a group, is a group of assets to be disposed of disposed of in a single transaction in a single transaction right? and liabilities directly associated associated with those assets that will be transferred in the transaction. So, medyo mahaba-haba yung definition no, ng isang disposal group. So, once again, a disposal group is a group of assets that to be disposed of, ibig sabihin, ibibenta na natin yan. In a single transaction, see to it, dapat single transaction lang, hindi partially. Ah. And liability directly associated on with those assets that will be transferred in the transaction. Right? So, here, Kapag ibebenta po natin yung disposal group, si to it na dapat mabebenta po natin lahat ng assets in a single transaction. Right? Also, once na nabenta natin lahat ng assets na yan in a single transaction, si to it that the liability directly associated with those assets will also be transferred to the buyer. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang yung assets yung ita-transfer natin kung sino man yung bibili, no? Ano pa yung ano pa yung ita-transfer natin? Ita transfer din po natin right, yung lahat ng liabilities na associated dun sa mga assets na nasa group. Now, after discussing what a non-current asset is, let's now move on to the non-current asset held for sale. So, kapag sinabi po nating non-current asset held for sale, this is actually defined in paragraph 6 of IFRS number 5. So, ano yung definition ng non-current asset held for sale? Sabi ng paragraph 6, this is actually a non-current asset or a disposal group. Once again, this is a non-current asset or, or a disposal group. That is why, diniscuss ko muna kung ano ba ang non-current asset at ano ba ang, disco, ang disposal group. Right? So, this is a non-current asset or a disposal group. Right? That is held for sale. Again, that is held for sale. Right? And ibig sabihin, if it is held for sale, we will now recover, again, we will now recover the carrying amount, not through use, but rather through sale. Right? Kaya siya natawag na non-current non asset held for sale because, right, the recovery of the non-current assets or the remaining non-current assets will not be through use. That is why, since hindi na natin gagamitin itong non-current asset na to, this non-current asset held for sale now must not be depreciated anymore. Ibig sabihin, hindi na po sa atin sila ay depreciate pa. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo doon? Alright? So, kapag nireclassify mo na ang isang non-current asset 
papunta sa non-current asset held for sale, situate na hindi na po siya i-depreciate. Ano nang mangyayari sa kanya? Right? Hindi mo na siya i-depreciate, but rather, right? Ang gagawin natin is ipipresent na natin siya from a non-current asset papunta sa isang current asset. You me? Because once again, the recovery of the carrying amount or the remaining carrying amount is not through continuing use but rather it is through sale na. You me? So kung sooner or later ibibenta na natin yan, dapat ang presentation na po niya or ang classification na niya sa balance sheet will be a current asset. So ngayon, what are the conditions for classification as held for sale? So actually, meron tayong dalawang conditions before a non-current asset or disposal group can be classified as a non-current asset held for sale. Ano yung unang condition natin? The first condition is that the asset, again, the asset, or disposal group, disposal group, is available for what? Is available for immediate sale. Again, the asset or the disposal group must be uh, immediately available right, for sale. You with me? in its present condition. Anong ibig sabihin niyan? Dapat, kayang-kaya mo na siyang mabenta as is. Again, dapat, kayang-kaya mo na siyang mabenta as is. Meaning, it can be sold as seen. Wala ka nang kailangan pang gawin for that asset. Hindi mo na kailangan pang i-repair, hindi mo na kailangan pang right, i-modify yung asset. It must be sold as seen. Next, what's the second condition? The second condition is that the sale must be what? the sale must be highly probable. Right? So, sir, anong ibig sabihin ng sale must be highly probable na yan? Actually, in order for a sale to be highly probable or to be considered to be a highly probable, highly probable, meron din tayong mga conditions. So, let's move on to the next, no? These are the conditions to be met in order for the sale to be highly probable because once again, if I may go back to my last slide, right, one of the conditions for uh, an asset to be classified as sell for sale is that the sale right, must be highly probable. Again, the sale must be highly probable. So, let's move on to the conditions to be met in order for the sale to be highly probable. Right? So, meron lang tayong lima. Right? Actually, ginawan ko to ng acronym. Right? Ang acronym ko dito is you care. Right? Ibig sabihin, right, nagkikare ka. Right? You care about him, you care about her, etc. Yun lang. Alright, so what's number one? Pero nasa dulo yung yun, no? Ang pangit lang kasi kapag care you, kaya ginawa kong you care. So number one is that the management must be committed. Alright? So para masabi mong nagkikare ka, dapat daw committed ka. Alright? Joke lang, alright? The management must be committed to a plan to sell the asset or disposal group. So, dapat hindi lang right plano, right, yung meron tayo. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang bara-barang usapan. Hindi lang porket sinabi ng management, ah, hindi na natin gagamitin yan. Taray, benta na natin. Hindi lang pwedeng ganon. Dapat, seryoso yung management. Dapat committed sila, right, dun sa plano na ibenta yung asset or disposal group. Otherwise, if the management, right, is not committed or are not committed to in the plan, or to the plan to sell the asset or the disposal group, the asset or the disposal group will not be classified as held for sale. Good me? Number two, what is number two? That's letter C, no? Kasi sa you care, start tayo sa care bago yung you. So number two, an active market or an active program rather, again, an active program. Yan yung letter A natin, no? Active program to locate a buyer. To locate a buyer, right? And complete, again, complete the plan must be what? Must have been initiated. Sir, anong ibig po sabihin yan? Ang ibig sabihin yan, hindi lang enough, hindi enough na committed yung management. Dapat naumpisahan na yung program in locating the buyer para masabi natin na talagang committed ka. Kasi hindi mo naman masasabi na committed ka if wala kang ginagawa, if hindi ka gumagalaw, tama ba? Pwede mo bang sabihin na, ah, gusto ko talagang ibenta yan. Pero, hindi mo naman talaga binibenta, meaning hindi ka naghahanap ng buyer, ni hindi mo nga, alright, hindi mo nga ina-advertise yung binibenta mo eh. 
So, ang ibig sabihin ngayon, in order for us right, to be really committed to the plan, there must be an active program to locate a buyer and complete the plan, of course. Right? And complete the plan. Then, of course, right, the plan must have been initiated. Anag? Next, punta tayo sa number 3. No? Number 3, sale price or sales price is reasonable. Again, sales price is reasonable. That is actually the third one. That is letter R sa UK natin. Is reasonable to what? In relation. Again, it is. it must be reasonable in relation to the fair value. So, dapat hindi sobrang layo alright, sa fair value nung price na sinet natin, no? Baka kasi sobrang baba na yan ang lumilitaw, parang dinodonate mo na lang, no? 1 million pang fair value nung car na yan. Then, binibenta mo bigla 50,000. So, parang hindi na sale yun. So, the sales price must be reasonable in relation to the fair value. That's the fourth requirement, right? Next, number four, the sale is expected, again, the sale is expected to be a completed sale. Again, the sale is expected to be a completed sale. Yun actually yung letter E natin. Expected to be completed sale. Burahin ko lang, no? Masyadong mababa yung pagkaka-underline ko. So, a sale, the, or the sale, is expected to be a completed sale within, again, within one year from date of what? Date of reclassification. Ibig sabihin, kapag nireclassify na natin, once again, kapag nireclassify na po natin yung non-current asset from a non-current asset to the non-current asset held for sale classification, dapat within one year, ina-expect natin na mabenta yan. Sir, paano kapag hindi po yan nabenta within one year, ibabalik na po ba natin siya sa non-current asset? Hindi pa rin. Right? Ang sinasabi lang ng standard or ang sinasabi lang naman ng IFRS 5 is dapat ini-expect natin on the date of reclassification na within one year mabibenta yan. But of course, we cannot force destiny kasi hindi mo naman may pipilit ang destiny. Tama ba? So even though ang ini-expect ng management is mabibenta yan within one year from the date of reclassification, it is possible still na hindi yan mabenta even after one year. But even though as long as meron tayong expectation on the date of reclassification, kahit na hindi ito nabenta, again, kahit na hindi po siya nabenta within one year, still, hindi po natin siya ibabalik sa non-current asset classification. Mananatili siya as a non-current asset held for sale. Get me? Then lastly, yun yung care natin, no? C-A-R-E. So, pupunta ngayon tayo sa letter U. Ano yung letter U? Letter U will be the actions required, again, number five, actions required to complete the plan to complete the plan, indicate what? Indicate what? Indicate that it is, that it is unlikely, so yun yung letter yun natin, no? it is unlikely, underline ko, that the plan, again, that the plan will uh, be, again, that the plan will be significantly, significantly, change or withdrawn. Ibig sabihin, dapat, right, super unlikely or it is unlikely that the plan will significantly change or withdrawn. So, ibig sabihin, hindi pwedeng makita sa actions or based on actions of the management na yung plano natin, again, yung plano natin is magbabago, right, sooner or later. Meaning, mag magpapalit na yung gusto natin, magpapalitan na yung motive natin regarding that asset. So, from uh, held for sale bigla, ang gusto mo na, no? Ang gusto mo na, ano? Ang gusto mo na, gagamitin mo na ulit siya. Dapat hindi yun makita sa management. So, these are the five conditions to be met in order for the sale to be highly probable. Because once again, one of the conditions for the classification as held for sale is that the sale must be highly probable. With me? So, enough with the theories, no? Kasi alam ko, boring yung theories. Ayaw na ayaw yung na, na, nakikinig ng theories. Pero kailangan actually yung mga yun, especially if you really want to pass the licensure examination. So, punta ngayon tayo sa measurement of non-parent asset held for sale in accordance with paragraph 15 of the standard. Let me? So, the measurement of non-parent asset held for sale is actually just the carrying amount or 
the fair value, less cost to sell. Cost to sell, by the way, is also known as cost of disposal. No? So, carrying amount or fair value. Alam naman natin yung fair value in accordance with IFRS 13. No? Right? So, fair value, less cost to sell, whichever is what? Whichever is lower. So, ibig sabihin, you have to compute how much will be the carrying amount of the asset or of the non-current asset held for sale. Then, you have to also know how much will be the fair value less cost to sell and whichever is lower, yun na yung ating gagamitin. Once again, this measurement is actually both the initial, again, this is both the initial and subsequent po, right? So, hindi lang yan pang initial, ha? initial and subsequent, carrying amount or fair value less cost to sell tayo, whichever is lower. So, ngayon, please take note, right, that accord, according to paragraph 15 of IFRS number 5, in the cost of sale, na dinididak na rin from the fair value, dapat exclusive daw yan. Again, this must be exclusive of what? This must be exclusive of finance cost. So, kapag meron ka nakitang interest expense, hindi yan kasama, no? And income tax expense, right? So, interest expense or finance cost and income tax expense are not part of the cost to sell. So, hindi sila kasama doon sa dinididak natin sa fair value to get the fair value less cost to sell. You with me? So, dito, if the carrying amount happened, again, if the carrying amount happened to be higher to what? To the fair value less cost to sell, ibig sabihin, mas mababa, no? Mas mababa yung fair value less cost to sell. So, if that will be the case, see to it that we have to recognize what? We have to recognize the difference as impairment loss. Again, we have to recognize the difference as impairment loss. And we all know na itong impairment loss na to part po yan ng profit or loss. Right? Then, if this is a disposal group, again, if this is a disposal group, anong requirement? May additional requirement dito eh. Anong additional requirement? Yung goodwill na yan, I mean, yung impairment loss na yan, allocate first to goodwill. Again, allocate first to goodwill. So, ubusin mo muna yung goodwill, no? Yun muna yung i-impair mo. Then, after you impair the goodwill, kapag meron pa rin natitirang impairment loss, no? The remainder is allocated to what? Allocated pro rata to uh, the other non-current asset. Again, to the other non-current asset based on carrying amount. So, kapag disposal group ang pinag-uusapan, yung impairment loss na yan, allocate mo muna sa goodwill. Kapag kulang yung goodwill, the remaining impairment loss is allocated pro rata to the other non-current asset based on their carrying amount. Nagkakaintindihan po ba tayo doon? Eh sir, papaano naman po if the fair value less cost to sell is higher, mas mababa yung carrying amount. If the carrying amount is lower, wala tayong problema. Because if the carrying amount is lower, right, wala tayong i-recognize na impairment loss. Sir, wala po bang gain na i-recognize? Wala. Because expected gain is never recognized here until, right, actually sold. Once again, expected gain are never recognized in the books. So, we can recognize an impairment loss, but if the carrying amount is lower, we will not, right, uh, recognize a gain. Because hindi mo pa naman nabibenta, eh, yung fair value less cost to sell na yan, eh, hindi mo pa talaga nare-receive. You with me? Ngayon, ganito, pupunta ngayon tayo sa subsequent, no? subsequent increased in fair value. So, what if may subsequent increase in fair value? So, kapag may subsequent increase in fair value, anong gagawin natin? Here, we can recognize gain. Again, we can recognize gain. But take note, meron akong kailangan sabihin sa inyo dito eh. Kailangan yung tandaan to, no? We can recognize gain, but not what? But not in excess. Again, not in excess of any impairment loss previously recognized. Ibig sabihin, if wala ka namang na-recognize, again, if wala ka namang na-recognize, no, na impairment loss previously, wala kang gain na i-recognize dito. Okay ba tayo dun? Pero, kapag meron kang impairment loss na na-recognize previously, we can recognize gain here if there will be subsequent increase in fair value, but not in excess of any impairment loss previously recognized. So, yun yung maximum amount ng uh, gain na pwede nating i-recognize. You with me? So, those are the important things 
or the important concepts you have to know here in measurement of non-current asset held for sale. And one last thing, no, before ko iwan, sama ko na rin. Sama na rin natin yung disposal or yung tinatawag natin na actual sale. So, kapag nagkaroon ng disposal or actual sale of asset, dito dalawa yung i-compare mo. No? Ano yung i-compare? Carrying amount, which is the latest measurement. Again, latest measurement yan. Ha? Versus the selling price. So, i-compare natin ngayon. Yan dalawang yan. Right? Obviously, if the carrying amount is higher than the selling price, meron tayo ditong loss kasi we receive less than the value of the asset that we are selling. Selling price is 100. The carrying amount is 120. So, we have a loss. But if the selling price is higher, obvious naman, no? If the selling price is higher, meron po tayong tinatawag na gain. And this gain or loss are actually recognized in the profit or loss. Again, nire-recognize po yung mga yan. Saan? Sa profit or loss. Right? So, para ma-apply natin yung mga yan sa isang problem natin dito, punta tayo sa illustrative problem number one. Get me? So, here in illustrative problem number one, on January 1, 2022, Pepper Company acquired a building at a cost of 10 million pesos. Let me just change the color of my pen, no? Parehong white, eh. So, 10 million pesos yung cost. To be used as admin office, ibig sabihin, initially, this building is a property, plant, and equipment. The building has an estimated useful life of 10 years and a residual value of 2 million pesos. Next, on January 1, 2026, the equipment was classified as held for sale and on such date, the fair value was estimated to be 7 million and the estimated cost of disposal is 500,000. So obviously, no, the fair value, less cost to sell in this problem is equal to 6.5 million. Again, this is equal to 6.5 million. Very good. And lastly, on September 30, 2026, the equipment was sold for 6.3 million. So here, what are the requirements? Requirement number one, how much is the measurement of the non-current asset held for sale on January 1, 2026? That is actually the date of reclassification, wherein we will now reclassify the building from PPE to non-cash asset or non-current asset rather held for sale. Get me? Ano nga ulit ang measurement? Measurement is the lower between the carrying amount and the fair value less cost to sell. So, compute muna natin yung carrying amount, no? So, let's compute first the annual depreciation. Magkano annual depreciation? That's equal to 10 million cost minus the 2 million residual value divided by the useful life of 10 years. So, this is actually equal to how much? This is equal to around 800,000. Ilang taon ang lumipas bago tayo nag- right? Reclassify ilang taon from January 1, 2022 to January 1, 2026. That's a period of 4 years. So, kapag minultiply natin to sa 4, compute po natin yung accumulated depreciation which is equal to 3.2 million. So, accumulated depreciation here is 3.2. You me? So, magkano carrying amount? Alam natin na yung carrying amount, that's just equal to cost. Magkano yung cost natin? Cost is equal to, magkano nga ulit yun? 10 million pesos while accumulated depreciation is equal to 3.2 million. So, the carrying amount now is equal to 6.8 million. Once again, the fair value less cost to sell is equal to 6.5 million. So, whichever is lower tayo, no? And obviously, mas mababa po yung fair value less cost to sell. That's why requirement number 1, 6.5 million will be our final answer. Because... The fair value less cost to sell is lower than the carrying amount. Then once again, sabi natin kanina, if the carrying amount is higher, meaning the fair value less cost to sell is lower, we will recognize an impairment loss. So magkano kaya yun? Obviously, no? the impairment loss in this problem is equal to 300,000. Because carrying amount is 6.8 and then fair value is 6.5. So requirement number 2, how much? Is the impairment loss to be recognized on January 1, 2026? Our final answer will be equal to 300,000. Well, good. Number three, how much is the gain or loss on disposal of the asset on September 30, 2026? Right? So, if disposal na tinatanong dito, sabi nga natin carrying amount versus what lang to? Carrying amount? based on latest measurement versus the selling price. 
So here, carrying amount based on latest measurement is 6.5 million na, hindi na 6.8. While the selling price, according to the problem, is 6.3 million. So obvious naman, no? We only receive 6.3 million. But we are selling an asset with value of uh, 6.5 million. So we here, we have to recognize here a loss of 200,000. So requirement number 3, 200,000. Please take note, put the word loss on your final answer. So 200,000 loss is our final answer. Number 4, if the fair value of the asset on January 1, 2026 is equal to 8 million pesos, then, number one, how much is the measurement of the non-current asset held for sale on January 1? Then, how much is the impairment loss? So, if 8 million ng fair value, compute natin yung fair value less cost to sell, no? So, fair value, 8 million pesos, cost to sell, di pa rin yan nagbabago, that's 500,000. So, if this will be the case, the fair value less cost to sell is equal to 7.5 million. We good? Carrying amount, as computed a while ago, is 6.8 million. So this time, which is lower? This time, mas mababa si carrying amount. That is why requirement letter A, 6.8 million will be our final answer because whichever is lower tayo. Eh. Then letter B, how much is the impairment loss? Final answer here will be zero. Why? Because we will only recognize an impairment loss if the fair value less cost to sell is lower. But if the carrying amount is lower, there will be no impairment loss. Right? Na recognize sa books. With me? Now, punta tayo sa next concept, no? What if the revalued asset is classified? Or the reva uh, a revalued asset is classified as held for sale? Kanina kasi cost model tayo, no? This time, what if we are using the revaluation model? So, para hindi tayo mahirapan, no? Bibigyan ko na lang kayo ng step-by-step -step procedures here. So, you have to understand, right, these steps para malaman mo kung paano ang gagawin mo dito. No? So, step number one, revalue. Again, step number one, revalue asset. Right? On the date of what? On the date of reclassification. Right? At fair value. So, you revalue mo muna yung asset. Right? On the date of reclassification at fair value. Take note, fair value lang. Ha? Not fair value less cost to sell. Right? Hindi mo muna ibabawas dito yung cost to sell. Fair value mo lang siya. E, right? Re-revalue. Sa fair value lang, ha? Right? And then here, see to it that if the fair value on the date of reclassification, right? Ibig sabihin, yung uh, new valuation ng asset is higher than the carrying amount. Any difference between the two will be recognized as what? As additional Right? Revaluation surplus. Again, any difference between the carrying amount and the fair value will be recognized as additional revaluation surplus. And as we all know, revaluation surplus is part of the other comprehensive income. Wanag? Next, let's move on to step number two. What is step number two? After we revalue, dun pa lang tayo makakapag-reclassify. So, step number two now is to reclassify asset from non-current asset to non-current asset held for sale. Right? So, step 1, revalue. Step 2, reclassify. But take note that in step number 1, once again, fair value lang ang ating ginamit. Ibig sabihin, yung cost to sell, hindi pa natin nakoconsider, no? So, situate that here. In step number 2, kapag nag-reclassify ka na, the cost to sell, right? The estimated cost to sell is recognized. Again, this will be recognized as impairment loss that will be part of the profit or loss. Sir, kahit na mas mataas yung fair value, still, the cost to sell is recognized as impairment loss. Yes, i-recognize pa rin natin. Why? Because an impairment loss or the cost to sell will always be part of what? Will always be part of PNL. Hindi kasi siya pwedeng maging part ng OCI. Eh, e remember, yung fair value pumupunta dito sa OCI. That is why hiniwalay natin yung cost to sell. Nagigets? Then, after that, right, okay ka na. Pupunta na tayo sa subsequent measurement. So, how to measure subsequently a revalued asset classified as held for sale? Well, in the subsequent measurement, again, in the subsequent measurement, pwede na ulit natin gamitin yung carrying amount or fair value less cost to sell, whichever is lower. Right? 
So, una, kapag nagre-reclassify ka, hindi mo muna to gagamitin, ha? Basta yung fair value, yun yung uh, measurement niya agad-agad. And then, revaluation surplus, yung difference ng fair value carrying amount. Cost to sell, recognizes loss. But sub in subsequently measuring the asset, dun na tayo babalik sa carrying amount or fair value less cost to sell, whichever is lower. And alam naman natin dito, no? That if, right, the fair value less cost to sell, right, is less than the carrying amount, recognize ulit tayo ng ano? Recognize ulit tayo ng difference in profit or loss that is actually the impairment loss. Right? Then lastly, punta ulit tayo sa disposal pero halos pareho lang eh. Pagdating sa disposal, pareho lang. Compare what? Compare the carrying amount and the selling price. Wherein if the carrying amount is higher, meron tayong loss. But if the carrying amount is lower, meron tayong gain. Then, itong gain or loss, papasok pa rin yan sa PNL. Pero, may additional akong sasabihin sa inyo dito sa disposal. Sir, ano yun? Kapag dinispose mo na yung asset, again, kapag dinispose mo na yung asset, always remember, right, that we also have to transfer the remaining balance. Again, we will transfer the remaining balance of revaluation surplus. Saan? Saan natin ito transfer? To retain earnings. So, we will transfer the remaining balance of revaluation surplus to retain earnings upon disposal. Very good. So, para mas magets natin yan, no? Let's consider illustrative problem number 2. So, here in illustrative problem number 2, on January 1, 2022, Pepper acquired a land at a cost of 4.5 million. So, this is actually a land, no? Meaning, non-depreciable asset. Next, the land is measured at fair value in accordance with the revaluation model. On December 31, 2022, which is after one year, the land, right, or the fair value of the land was 6 million. So, nagkaroon dito yung revaluation surplus. Again, magkakaroon tayo ng revaluation surplus of 1.5 million kasi mas malaki yung fair value. Eh. Next, on June 30, 2023, which is after six months, the land was reclassified as held for sale. Then on such date, the fair value was estimated to be at 7.5 million while the cost of disposal is 700,000. Nakakaintindihan po ba tayo na? Are we good on that? So, see it here, right, na ano yung magiging journal entry natin na dito for classification? Once again, right, i uh, remeasure ko muna. Again, remeasure mo muna. So, what is the journal entry on the remeasurement? So, dun sa remeasurement, journal entry is to debit, right, land, and then to credit what? To credit revaluation surplus kasi dadagdagan natin yung revaluation surplus. From 6 million, naging 7.5 million, therefore may additional pang 1.5 million dito. So, 1.5 million. So, total revaluation surplus natin ngayon is equal to 3 million, no? Next, after mag-remeasure, saka tayo mag-reclassify. Right. So, what's the journal entry here? Debit, non-current asset held for sale, and then credit. Again, debit, non-current asset held for sale, credit land, kasi i -re reclassify na natin siya. Eh. Magkano yun? 7.5 million na yung halaga niya. We good? Now, we will recognize, sabi nga natin kanina, yung disposal cost as impairment loss. So, debit, impairment loss, which is equal to 700,000, then credit, non current asset held for sale equal to 700,000. Right? So, dito, kung tatanungin tayo, wa, how much is the measurement of the non-current asset held for sale on June 30, 2023, our final answer now will be equal to 7.5 million minus 700,000 or this is equal to 6.8 million. So, 6.8 million, final answer, requirement number one. Requirement number two, how much is the impairment loss to be recognized on June 30? This is AC. This is equal to the disposal cost. Therefore, 700,000 final answer requirement number two. Then requirement three, how much is the gain or loss on disposal of the asset on December 31? Because on December 31, the asset was sold for 8 million. So here the selling price is equal to 8 million pesos. While the carrying amount so far, magkano measurement? 7.5 million. So, this time, meron po tayong gain. And how much is the gain? The gain is 500,000. So, requirement number 3, 
500,000 gain, you have to put gain on your final answer. Ah. 500,000 gain is our final answer. So those are the concepts. If we re uh, if a revalued asset is reclassified as held for sale. Next concept will be the abandoned non-current asset. Hopefully, nakakasunod ka pa, no? You can, uh, anytime post naman this video, and you can always rewind, right, this discussion of us, right, just in case man na naiiwan ka na, right? So, kapag meron tayong abandoned non-current asset, sabi ni paragraph number 13 and 14, again, sabi po ni paragraph 13 and 14, ni, na, ni standard or ng IFRS 5, Right? Hindi po natin ito pwedeng i-classify. Again, not classified po sila as what? Not classified as non-current asset held for sale. Right? Whether permanently or temporarily abandoned. Ha? Sir, bakit? Because kapag inabandon mo lang ang non-current asset, pwedeng-pwede mo yan ibalik sa operation. Right? Remember, before an item or before a non-current asset can be classified as held for sale, one of the conditions is dapat what? Is dapat meron kang committed plan to sell the asset. Eh, kapag inabandon mo lang yan, hindi mo naman yan bente. Eh. Kapag inabandon, syempre, masisira yan, maluluma yan, mas lalo mong hindi na mabibenta. That is why abandoned non-current assets are not classified as non-current asset held for sale, whether temporarily or permanently abandoned. With me? Next, let's move on to the presentation of asset classified as held for sale. Nasabi ko na to kanina eh, lagi mong tatandaan, huwag kang magpapalit to ha, ah. current asset na po yan. Hindi porket may non-current asset sa pangalan niya, e eh, non-current na yan. Situate na since ibibenta mo naman na yan, magiging current asset po siya. We will present it as another line item in the statement of financial position under current assets. We good? Then last will be the change in classification. Sir, anong ibig sabihin ng change in classification? Ibig lang sabihin yan, from non-current asset held for sale, ibabalik natin yan from being a non-current asset. Sabihin na natin property, plant, and equipment. Sir, bakit naman? Well, nangyayari yan because there is a decision not to sell the non-current asset anymore. Meaning, nagsawa ka na, maghanap ng buyer, hindi mo mabenta eh. So, if hindi mo mabenta, nag-decide ka ngayon na hindi mo na ibebenta yung asset, gagamitin mo na ulit siya. So, if that will be the case, na nagkaroon ng change in the decision or change in the motive, si to it, na ibalik mo na siya sa non-current asset held for sale. Another reason is kapag, right, the criteria for being classified as held for sale, right, may no longer be met. Iwanag ba? So, kapag isa sa mga criteria or conditions kanina, hindi na namimit, ibalik mo na rin siya sa PPE or sa non-current asset. So, ang problema natin dito is yung measurement, no? How do we measure, right? How do we measure the property, plant, and equipment after the reclassification or after natin siyang ibalik sa PPE? Well, according to paragraph number 27, again, according to paragraph 27 of IFRS number 5, if there will be change in classification, see to it that the measurement is equal to the carrying amount as if not reclass, right, to what? Not reclass as non-current asset held for sale. Once again, it is the carrying amount at if, as if not reclass as non-current asset held for sale. Meaning, right, babalikan natin yung carrying amount niya dati and then magre-recognize tayo ng depreciation na as if hindi siya nireclassify as held for sale. Remember, kapag held for sale siya, no, no depreciation is recorded anymore, no? So, magkaiba yung carrying amount na yan compared sa carrying amount niya currently. Right? Or, at yan, or to ha, or the recoverable amount. Again, recoverable amount, whichever is what? Whichever is lower. Right? So, kailangan mo ngayong malaman kung anong mas mababa dun sa carrying amount and recoverable amount. See to it is that recoverable amount is discussed in IAS 36. And sabi ng IAS 36, huwag kang magpapalito ha. Carrying amount is the fair value less cost to sell or value in use whichever is what? Whichever is higher naman tayo dito. Once again, whichever is higher. So, see to it na, na kapag recoverable amount ang kinocompute mo, whichever is higher. Pero after mo yung compute kapag i-compare mo na siya dun sa carrying amount as if reclass, 
not reclass rather as non-current asset held for sale, whichever is lower na tayo. Maliwanag? Then one last thing, no? One last thing. If the carrying amount, right, of the non-current asset held for sale before reclassification, again, before reclassification, no? Right? Is higher, again, is higher than the carrying amount of Non current asset na lang hindi na held for sale after reclassification anong meron dito anong meron meron po tayong i-recognize na loss on sale sir bakit ta at loss on reclassification rather sir bakit naman kasi bababa yung value ng asset natin remember that this is an asset at kapag asset yan gusto natin na tumataas yung value ng asset natin so kapag bumaba yung value ng asset natin because the new classification or the new measurement is lower than the old measurement, we have to recognize a loss. But if the carrying amount of non-current asset held for sale before reclassification is lower than the carrying amount of the non-current asset after reclassification, meaning mas mataas, no? Mas mataas yung carrying amount as if not reclass or recoverable amount whichever is lower. So kapag mas mataas yun, tumaas yung value ng asset natin so, this time, we will recognize a gain. We good? So, para ma-apply natin yan sa last problem natin, let's move on to illustrative problem number 3. So, here, Pepper Company purchase building for 10 million pesos. So, we purchase a building equal to 10 million pesos on January 1, 2022 with useful life of 10 years and no residual value. On December 31, 2023, Pepper classified the asset as held for sale. That is how many years? How many years? That is after 2 years from the date of acquisition. Next, the fair value of the equipment on that date is 6.6 .6 million, while 300,000 is the disposal cost. Ibig sabihin, the fair value less cost to sell now is equal to 6.3 million. Very good. Now, on December 31, 2024, which is after one year, no? After one year, Pepper believed that the criteria for classification as held for sale can no longer be met. Accordingly, Pepper decided not to sell the asset but to continue use it. The fair value less, the fair value less cost to sell and the value in use on that date is 7.2 million and 7 million, right? So, requirement number one, how much is the measurement of the non-current asset held for sale on December 31, 2023. Once again, dito, i reclassify pa lang natin yung building from building to non-current asset held for sale. So, whichever is lower tayo, no? So, kukompute muna natin dito yung carrying amount. So, annual depreciation will be first computed. Magkano to guys? This is 10 million cost divided by 10 years or this is equal to 1 million pesos. Next, accumulated depreciation on the other hand is 1 million every year. How long before we reclassify the non-current asset as held for sale? That's after 2 years. So, times 2 years. See to it now, the 2 million will be our accumulated depreciation. So, how much will be the carrying amount? Carrying amount now is equal to 10 million cost minus 2 million accumulated depreciation. Or this is equal to 8 million pesos. Once again, the, classific uh, the measurement of non-current asset held for sale is carrying amount or fair value less cost to sell, whichever is lower. So, fair value less cost to sell is lower. That's only equal to 6.3 million. So, requirement number one, 6.3 million is our final answer. Requirement two, how much is the impairment loss to be recognized on December 31, 2023? Kailan nga lang ulit tayo nagre-recognize ng impairment loss? Only if the fair value less cost to sell is lower. So, here, mas mababa naman talaga siya. So, the difference between 8 million carrying amount and 6.3 million, fair value will now be recognized as impairment loss. And that's equal to 1,700,000. So, requirement number 2, 1.7 million is our final answer. Requirement 3, how much is the measurement of the building on December 31, 2024 after the change in classification? So, if, once again, Right after nang tinatanong, the measurement will be the carrying amount as if, again, carrying amount as if not reclassified, right? Or the recoverable amount, whichever is lower. So, recoverable amount muna, no? 
kapag recoverable amount ang pinag-uusapan, it is the fair value less cost to sell of 7.2 million or value in use, which is 7 million, whichever is higher. Again, kapag recoverable amount, whichever is higher. So, obvious naman, no? 7.2 million ang ating gagamitin because this is higher. Now, compute natin yung right, carrying amount as if, right, as if what? As if, not reclassified to, as held for sale. So, here, we acquired the asset on January 1, 2022. Ano na yung tinatanong dito? Kailan tayo bumalik sa non-current asset? December 31, 2024. Ibig sabihin, this is after 3 years. Again, this is after 3 years. Maluanag. So, the accumulated depreciation now, if annual depreciation before reclassification is 1 million, multiply mo yun sa 3, accumulated debt now is equal to 3 million pesos. So, magkano yung carrying amount? As if not reclassified the sell for sale. This is 10 million minus 3 million or this is equal to 7 million pesos, no? Once again, carrying amount as if, and dito wa tayo, eh. carrying amount as if not reclass as non-current asset held for sale or recoverable amount, whichever is lower. So, mas mababa po yung 7 million pesos. Again, mas mababa si 7 million. That is why here, our final answer here in requirement number 3 will be equal to 7 million pesos. Again, requirement number 3, 7 million will be our final answer. We're good? Now, how much is the gain on reversal on December 31, 2024? Well, ang measurement na natin, once again, is equal to 7 million, which is lower. So, the carrying amount, on the other hand, before reclassification is magkano? That is 6.3 million. Again, that is equal to 6.3 million. Ibig sabihin dito, right, tumaas yung value ng asset kasi before, right, reclassifying it back as PPE, 6.3 million lang value ng asset. Pero after reclassifying it back, 7 million na. So, we have to recognize in a gain and the gain is equal to 700,000. So, requirement number 4, 700,000 is our final answer. Again, requirement number 4, 700,000 is our final answer. Right? So, that's the end of non-current asset held for sale. Hopefully, you guys learned a lot from this video. Right? Thank you guys for watching. See you on our next video. Bye-bye and God bless.